For those of you that are watching this and saying to yourself, wait a second, aren't they in the same building? Yes, you're correct. Uh, Carter is a room over from me right now with a closed door in between us, but the grind does not stop. Team USA wins the gold medal of the Olympics. They beat France in Paris. Car, you told me this would happen. Yeah, I was going to say, can you repeat that one more time? Uh, Team USA wins the gold medal, beating France in France in a true home game for France. Mm -hmm. And uh, you told me this would happen. Yeah, uh, so are you? I, I don't understand why we even had this little dance that we did about the Olympics when USA was minus what sixteen hundred to win it all for a reason. It's it it just brings me back to this point. It's it's cute that the world's catching up. It's cute. It's fun. Uh, shout out to Shay. Shout out to Nikola Jokic. Shout out to even Wemby and every other anybody else that played in these World Games. The uh, team Germany, Schroeder, the the Wagner brothers. Uh, but when it comes to this hoop shit, there's levels. And the level is set by the United States. Um, and for the, I believe it's fifth or sixth Olympics in the row, uh, the United States has claimed gold because it's just what we do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the I I don't like that we have to do this dance at the beginning of this where it's like, Greg, you were rooting against us the whole time, and I told you this was going to happen. I feel like what happened in both the semifinal down the stretch against Serbia and the final against France was so singularly cool and unique and entertaining that you and I should drop our respective narratives here. Like you don't need to drop the, we were obviously going to win gold thing, but also like we should probably acknowledge the fact that like you, I don't think you thought it would be like the way it happened. Like, I don't think you thought we needed Steph Curry to score 12 points in the final two and a half minutes to be France in France. Like that was really cool. And you should stop acting like you knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Why can I just act like for this once that I knew it was going to happen? Okay, fine. Um, did you know that Victor Wembanyama would be the leading scorer in this game? Uh, no, I did not. But um, look, listen, <laughs> this, this Olympic experience honestly was some of the purest form of hoop, at least to me that I can remember in a long time. And and maybe it's because I'm an advocate of, uh, you know, ISO ball and do him offense, but watching the best players in the world uh, and, and, and goats of our generation do what they did uh, in those Olympic games, it was truly uh, uh, an amazing viewing experience. Had me emotional at times. I'm not going to cap about it. Like watching Curry, Braun and KD, like the three big, the big three of our generation, of basketball having like this last dance type Olympic run to get to the gold medal was, was just special to watch. And I feel like each player had his moment. Like Durant had his moments, obviously, you know, Curry in the biggest moment had his moment, uh, which is great to see. And then Bron was being Bron the whole time. Like at age 39, he was MVP of the Olympics. Um, it was it was truly a special experience and and something that makes it hard to be like, okay, I just watched that. And now, Greg, in a couple months, like, we're going to be really grinding out Jalen Duran and, like, you know, I don't know, Alec Burke minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get enough of the content around how this happened. Obviously, it was, like, a euphoric experience to anybody watching Team USA to see Steph Curry do what he did at the end of this game. Uh, there obviously are a lot of people who are correct in saying this is what Warriors fans have felt like all along. It's like, like if you are an NBA fan of a different team that has rooted against Steph Curry for all these years for whatever reason, now you got a chance to root for him. Oh, that's what it's like. Like, and I, I am not somebody who has rooted against Steph through the years. I've normally found myself rooting for the Warriors against LeBron and against others. And uh, I just thought it was cool that like the collective basketball culture in America of fans could like experience Curry together because the reality is we don't have many of this left right like we we don't know how long he's gonna play we don't know how long katie's gonna play we don't know how long lebron is gonna play but the one thing we do know at least for right now is that all three of these dudes still can play like i think that's lost on lost on in, in this entire experience around oh this is probably their last run at it and it's a passing of the torch and isn't it cool that they're here no it's not just cool that they're here these were the best three players on this team and this team was built in the the context of how do we 
win with these three players? How do we help them the most? Who is the player that makes the most sense alongside them? Oh, it's Devin Booker. Okay, then Devin Booker's going to play all game. Like, uh, what big works best with this group? Some games it's Embiid. Some games it's Anthony Davis. Okay. Like, sorry, Jason Tatum, you don't make a lot of sense with these guys. You're going to come off the bench. Like, it just all these decisions were made leading up to this. And even in the early stages, the group stage and the exhibitions, it felt like it wasn't true. Like, there was discussion back at the beginning. It's like, oh, well, Ant's the leading scorer. Is Anthony Edwards the best player here? No, when when it came time, LeBron James and Steph Curry and Kevin Durant were going to decide what happened to this team, and they did. And it was cool. We talked about it in the Serbia recap. It was cool how they like navigated that together. And then in this game, man, the clip of of Steph hitting the fourth one, the fadeaway over two defenders, has obviously gone viral. He hits the night night, the nui nui, or however you say yeah, it, nui nui. And but you you see that one angle, like LeBron and Kevin Durant arguably the best player ever and arguably the best scorer ever are standing there wide open. And <laughs> Steph Curry takes a double team fade away from the parking lot. And nobody even would ever insinuate it's a bad shot because of how great he is. That was just cool to watch play out. And I think basketball purists, basketball fans everywhere could appreciate that. Yeah. Because like coming into the Olympics, there was somewhat of a narrative that like, they were going to be uh, the quote unquote old heads on the team, and there was going to be like a handing of the torch. No. But towards as the Olympics played out, it was like, oh no, these guys are still here. These guys are still the cream of the crop of the NBA, especially in American basketball player terms. And like there was this like, oh, maybe shift it to the next generation, to the Tatum's, the Halliburton's, and uh, you know the Ant Edwards of the world. And Ant had his moments. Don't get me wrong. Ant was a part of the rotation. Uh, but besides that, like it was more so just like LeBron, KD, and Curry just showing their greatness. Yeah, you know how like I mean, you're an ox court aficionado, right? Like you know sure. how at, at a party, Why or, you ask me that? I'm just stating it so people that don't know you will know. I knew you knew this, but like, let's just say you know you're at a party, and you, uh, the boys are there. The pregame, obviously, the girls come over, but like. Carts on the ox. You know you're going to play something to everybody. Do you ever have that thing where, like, you know, after four or five songs, like, every six songs, you got to play one for the girls? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you come back, and then when it's winning time, when it's final ten minutes before we go to the bar, like, you know the hits are coming out, right? Of course. That was this. Anthony Edwards was the song you put on to play the girls. Like, they, Steve Kerr put Anthony Edwards in the game to please NBA Twitter. Like, here you go. Here, here you go. And then the next five are going to be Curry and LeBron and KD. Like, <laughs> that's what it felt like watching this. It worked. It was fun. There's no passing of the torch. Like, you and I just talked about this outside for two hours. I don't know where the NBA is headed. And I don't know that that's good or bad or anything. I just know this. Like, the LeBron James era was also the Steph Curry era. And, and Kevin Durant mixed in somewhere in there. And all of these are coming to an end. And there is no reasonable next guy up, no matter how much we all want there to be. And that makes it exciting and cool and fun. But if Anthony Edwards is supposed to be the next face of basketball, we'll see where that goes. Like to to me, if the torch was going to be passed to anyone right now, it would go to the three Euro guys. And by three Euro guys, I mean, Jokic, Giannis, Luca, both of, uh, I mean, all three of those guys have had deep playoff runs, uh, two championships in there. We'll see what Luca can do in the next couple of years. But like to me, that those are the people who are running this sport and inheriting it. It's gonna be up to the US to figure out where they go next. And somebody named Victor Wemanyama is gonna have a big say in things as well. Um I did workshop this a little bit with you earlier, and I feel obligated to go there. Do you are you able to like process what happened in this Olympic tournament? and kind of contextualize it in the like where do LeBron and Curry rank all time conversation because like an Olympic gold medal the way they won this I think is like a resume moment but these two have kind of competed with each other for resume stuff like how, what what happened this week what does that mean to you as far as their legacies go the, the thing is like as I was watching it I never found myself comparing it like I I don't know if it was just like I was in the moment and I was just enjoying it for what it was but I was just like oh it's Curry and Bron it's not is it Curry or Bron it was like no 
it's Curry and Bron playing as one, finally playing with each other after all these battles all these years. Um, and, you know, you get to the end of it, Curry has his moments. Uh, Curry basically, you know, he had his – he closed the deal. Like, he was the, the guy. Player. He was the yeah, guy. He, he was he was the guy when it came to winning time and came to to winning the gold medal, but at the same time, like Anthony Edwards made a joke. Uh, they were wondering where Curry was two <laughs> weeks ago. Like they didn't know where he was. But yeah. when it came to this time, he had his moment. And and Bron is Bron is Bron, man. Like yeah, Olympic MVP for a reason. Uh, he was integral to this team. I don't know. I just I, I found myself watching it and I was just appreciating. Just Curry and Bron playing together, to be honest yeah. with you. I was too. I, I don't mean to say I wasn't just enjoying it and appreciating it, but like mm -hmm. now that we are through it, LeBron wins MVP of the Olympics, which I think was deserved. And also while saying that out loud, it's like, well, wait a second. Curry kind of finished everything, right? Like he he in the final two games, like it was Curry. And it was Braun too, but like certainly down the stretch of this, a three point game with three and a half minutes left. It was Curry. That was it. It was nobody else. It wasn't Braun and KD and Curry. It was Curry. And I like maybe it's that we're running out of opportunities for this because th this might be the final time we watch these guys play for anything. Straight up, as as sad as that is to say out loud, I don't know that we're gonna get LeBron in like a meaningful playoff game. Again, I don't know that we're going to get Curry. Like the, these guys have missed the playoffs in the last couple of years at times, or, or at least if they get to the playoffs, don't do anything. So mm -hmm. to have it happening at once, like it, it almost felt like there was that spark in these guys eyes again of like, Oh, remember this? Remember when I was the baddest in the world? And like, this is what was going on. And it, it certainly still could happen in the NBA. Like maybe it's not done. Maybe they'll be on the Olympic team four years uh, from now again. I don't know. But it was just so compelling to me that, like, for two players, taking Kevin Durant out of it, Braun and Curry have basically gone at each other their whole careers. And even if one of them or both of them wouldn't admit it at times, like, they were each other's biggest obstacle. It wasn't anybody else. And I think in a lot of ways – even if it's not acknowledged, they've been equals. They have the same number of rings. They do everything so differently. But the, it, to me, like legacy-wise, you're talking the second best player or first best player ever and a clear top 10, maybe best point guard ever. And it was just really fascinating for me. Like if this is our modern version of like bird versus magic, when it came time, one deferred to the other completely. Like I... And, and Braun was the MVP. But like, shit, man. Like, I don't know how you watch what Curry did. It made me appreciate Curry maybe more than I ever have. Because I'm like, holy shit, on a team with LeBron, it was Curry. I didn't think that would happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and honestly, like, it, it seemed like, and maybe it's because Bron sees the game in a different way, but like he was deferring to Curry because he saw what Curry was doing. Yeah. And, and and it's both smart, but also just like it was in the grand scheme of it. And I don't mean to like put you as like a you're picking one side of the other. I, I see what you're saying, but it was kind of like, and I even feel weird saying this. It's like Bron was letting Curry have his moment. Like, oh, bro, like, 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 I'm sorry. Like, Bron is Bron's done. No, you. He we, he had his gold medal, so like he's letting Curry have his moment. We gotta get you to therapy, man. This is unacceptable. The way you interpret certain things that happen from certain guys that seem to be your favorites is a little. LeBron let Steph Curry make four threes in a row to ice the game in a one possession game. He he let him have his. Bron's yeah, been. Bron let this, him do that. What is, is this? What is this? Bron's third gold medal. It's crazy, man. How many does Curry have? LeBron was so generous to give Steph Curry four championships. In his yeah, he already had, yeah, he already has, yeah. yeah, he already had his four. He wasn't trying to be Jordan. He just he just wanted to be generous and hand out. We're not we're Curry. not bringing up the bald man. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason Tatum. I think we should have a separate conversation about him. What but, about him? Uh, just to be extremely clear, I would like to say this. Uh, in the gold medal game. 
Jason Tatum played the seventh most minutes on the team. He played as many minutes as Joel Embiid. He played more minutes than Bam Adebayo. He played more minutes than Anthony Edwards. He played more minutes than Derek White. He played more minutes than Tyrese Halliburton. In two less minutes, Anthony Edwards had eight points. Hit two threes. Jason Tatum did nothing. Two fouls. That was nice. But I just I just want to make sure the record books have that one. Am I clear on that one? Oh, you're you're very clear. And well, it, it, there's probably a larger discussion to be had here. Um, I just hate what's happening to him, though. I'm sorry. I I know, like it's just it's it's wild for him. I to to have to play behind Derek White, and I understand like he had more minutes in this game, but like getting DMPs behind Derek White's crazy. I'm sorry. He, I mean, he didn't get a DMP. Derek White and Tyrese Halliburton did uh, in this game. Correct. He's gotten DMPs the whole Olympics. Oh, oh boo hoo! Is this the Jason Tatum Invitational, or did he get a gold medal? Like, he got a gold medal. Boo hoo! How hard? You know what? Let's do another video on this. Any final <laughs> Olympics takeaways on this team? Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 good to just end my patriotic watch. I just want to let other all the other countries know it was cute. Welcome to the the silver medal Invitational. Congrats once again to France for winning that title. Uh, it's cute that you got a generational talent in Wemby. And, you know, you got guys like Nolan Traore coming up. Hopefully they do a little something for you because we got some shit coming for y'all too. Uh, AJ DeBance is in the fold. Cooper Flag's in the fold. And we got some young dogs that are going to come up too. And I look forward to 2028 and bringing home yet another gold. Uh, any comment on Gershon Yabaselli's poster of LeBron James? Hmm? Any comment on Gershon Yabaselli's dunk on LeBron James? I haven't seen it. You, you haven't? Mm -mm. Did you watch the game? Yeah. You watched every second? Yep. And you didn't see the Gershon Yabuselli dunk? That dunk was over Brian? It was. Oh, good dunk. Pretty good dunk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, my final takeaway would just be this. A lot of young people out there, maybe not young, maybe all people, but I think it's young people, like to refer to Paul George as their GOAT. <laughs> That, this is what really gets to you, doesn't it? Devin Booker's my goat. I just want to say that for the for the remainder of my life, I get it now. I get it. All you like little 14-year-olds out there who are like, Paul George is my goat. Ooh. Devin Booker's my goat. That dude may be the most unselfish basketball player in NBA history, maybe basketball history. Uh, he is the coolest player in history for me. Uh, the, basically, Devin Booker's Olympic role is what I've been trying to bring to every pickup basketball team in the greater <laughs> Kalamazoo area for 15 years. Like that's, I swear to God card. That's I show up to the Y or to Bronson athletic center. I punch my ticket. I lace them up. I stand in the corner and I say, this is what I can give you. I'll do that. And we will win championships. If you use me the right way, folks, uh, Devin Booker, I salute you. Congrats to the United States of America. Uh, congrats to Carter Elliott. This was a huge win for you and your resume as a prognosticator of Olympic basketball. It's that time, Cart. Football season is approaching, and you know exactly what that means. It means that we are both going to bet and bet a lot with our friends at MyBookie. Yeah, MyBookie is the best and premier sports book used by us over here at Sleepers Media. They have everything you need, Greg, with football season approaching. There's nothing I love more than looking at a nice Saturday slate and even leading into a little bit of Sunday, dipping into the NFL. But there's no better place to do it than with my bookie. And I think we got a great offer for the folks over uh, at my bookie if they want to tap in with us. We sure as hell do. And I'm going to tell you all about that offer. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the great benefits of betting with my bookie. My bookie is safe, secure. Most importantly, when you win, you get paid quick. If the first two legs of your parlay hit, cash out early, use those funds on another bet or let it ride for a chance at a bigger payday. With football season coming, they're going to have a bunch of great things in store for you, whether you're looking to bet futures game lines, player props, all of it is available with our friends at MyBookie. And you can get a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. There's a link in this description, promo code SLEEPERS. With MyBookie, make sure you get that 50% deposit match. Use those funds. Maximize your chances of winning as football season gets here. And we'll be there with you every single step of the way.